WorkSharp presents the Northwest Outdoorsman. Let's just get in that little draw right there, this first one, and go down. <laughs> yeah, baby. Right on. Right on, huh? Nice fish. That's a nice cooking. That is awesome. Oh, my goodness. It's going down. Boom. Oh, yeah. Got him. Now we're having fun. I'm having lots of fun. Anytime I can go fishing, I'm having fun. Yep. First day. See if he's a good enough one to shoot. Let's go see if we can catch him. Okay. This week on the Northwest Outdoorsman. Nice fish. Bob Loomis and Brett Boyd enjoy a great day walleye fishing in the mighty Columbia River. Yeah, nice fish. Sharp presents the Northwest Outdoorsman brought to you by Max Lure, Sportsman's Warehouse, Whitewater Lodge, Procure Bait Sense, Valley Marine, Micklich, Wolf Creek Hunting. Life. Anglers in the Northwest are becoming more and more passionate about walleye fishing. The Columbia River system from British Columbia to the mouth has a sizable population of walleye. These tasty, toothy fish are addictive, and many fishermen spend hours and days trying to master catching these fish. Brett Boyd and Rich Herod have fished stretches of the lower Columbia River for years and share their favorite places with Bob Loomis. Probably 25 years ago, I fished uh, below the John Day Dam with uh, some friends from Lure Jensen. And, uh, you know, it was a long time ago, uh, but just haven't fished down there for years. Bobby and I have been talking about fishing in this area for a long well, time, so who better to go down there with than Brett? Uh, he knows the area pretty well, and, and actually he just fished there recently with his brother Chris, and we were excited to be there. What you would like? Rich sure, called sure. Uh, a couple nights ago and just asked if I wanted to come, and I've heard lots of stories about the legendary Bob Loomis um, and uh, <laughs> some of your guys' past adventures and I really wanted to get out and fish with him. It was a chance to see, see you again, so I, I jumped on it. Uh, you're having to like beat their heads against the side of the boat. Yeah, you kind of slow them out. down a little bit so they wouldn't <laughs> scare the fish off. Yeah, we went up and tried a spot close to the dam. We, uh, my brother and I were here oh, a week and a half ago and uh, we were catching quite a few fish up there. <laughs> <Don't do it>. <laughs> <laughs> we started out fishing up below the dam in a spot by some willows. Man, it's been a while since I fished the river. The, the river is absolutely higher, muddier, colder than it's been, you know, in, like I said, 50 years almost. At uh, 8,000 feet, we still have like 12, 14 feet of snow. <laughs> oh, come on. So you're fishing different spots than what generally would be fish. Shoot, that was a nice fish, too. Oh, oh yeah, I wonder if I uh, got mauled. Yeah, we went up and tried a spot close to the dam, made a couple few passes on the Washington side, and that was, current was still moving a little fast for trolling. I did get bit on the other one, because that means half my tail was gone. Yeah, this 27, 28 feet of water, starting out in this deeper water, and then we kind of hook in. Now, you know, we got bit, I got bit down here a little bit lower. Yeah. Maybe all those fish are down here a little bit lower. What the? You missed again? Yeah. Oh God. Now that now that one came up and grabbed it and went like that yeah. and just jerked it. Last time we were letting them eat it a little bit even. Were you? Yeah, yeah letting it load up because it was like they we lost they, a ton of. You know, I tried to, I tried to sweep it. Weird. Yeah. <laughs> oh damn. This one? No. I don't miss it. 
They just get away every once in a while. Well, I've known Brett for a really long time. He, he's, he's a good friend of my brother's and, and now uh, our colleagues in, in their work. And uh, we've been doing things together ever since. And I met Ron, um, he was working at Roaring River Hatchery actually. And I was a truck driver when I was working at Sandy Hatchery. And then uh, we both had families and kids about the same time. And so we, our wives became friends and we became closer friends and started fishing hunting together. And a lot of times Brett and I uh, see each other at our, our bear camp or where we go turkey hunting over in Eastern Oregon. And, and so it's, it's a lot of fun to get together with him uh, on a fishing trip. Nope. <laughs> Just kind of going with it. But those fish were biting very, very light. You'd have to feel them picking up that bait and spitting it back out. Coming up after the break? No, same size. What's that? Yeah, nice fish. Well, it's productive. productive. WorkSharp presents the Northwest Outdoorsman brought to you by Max Lure, Sportsman's Warehouse, Whitewater Lodge, Procure Bait Sense, Valley Marine, Micklich, Wolf Creek Hunting. Welcome back to the Lower Columbia River. But those fish were biting very, very light. You'd have to feel them picking up that bait and spitting it back out. Yeah, we went up and tried a spot close to the dam, and um, it was a little slow up there. Uh, we picked up a couple fish. We were getting bit. Uh, apparently, I did get bit. There's a fish. No, same size. You gotta have a little something to really to correct itself because it's every time it turns a wind catches the bow. Are we still oh we're done here. So then we we moved on down river uh, to where there was a, a a bunch of boats were fishing a flat. But I am styling in my new shades. There's nothing one right in front of us. Are they jigging? Yeah. Figures. I think those fish are still hitting that that same pattern, it's a matter of getting over some fish. Darks and golds, you know, th uh, things like that, that that work really well this time of the year, those uh, emerging small uh, uh, different types of uh, like mud minnow patterns, um, small crawdad patterns, you know, dark, dark colors like that. Better one. Uh, now, it's entirely up to you. If you want to change that, you can change it over to one of these gold ones. Hey. Good fish, too. The net this on is, that this one? is on the gold, the gold tapered beat. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, there's one. <laughs> there you go. Nice fish. Yeah, it is. Oh. That. Yeah, nice fish. Good fish. They're done spawning. Uh, the females are probably kind of moved off and recovering, and those males are still kind of congregated on those flats, and they're probably trying to eat and regain some of what they lost back. We're trolling downstream on those seams and stuff, and man, we're trolling it too. And they and they should have like really, really jumped on it, but. Obviously, that clarity must have had a lot to do with that. Fishing the river versus fishing a lake, totally different. You've got current to contend with, you've got brake lines in the current, you know. I mean, you're talking the Columbia River, for crying out loud, that runs, you know, eight, nine knots. Trying to figure out where you need to go at any given time is obviously very difficult. But of course, when you got guys like Brett that know what they're doing. I just, I just can't catch them. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That, that, that's yeah. nothing more than a fluke. A couple times before when I fished down in this area, I had used the green and chartreuse wallipop and had a lot of success. You want that? Nice. 
the old Wally Pop. should mark that spot if you got bit too and you got in a fish. Oh yeah. Double swammy. Uh, heel, heel. Must be good back there. I even caught one. Maybe we should go back up. When you find a spot where you hit fish and then the next time you hit a fish in the same spot again and you hit a fish, well guess what? A little light bulb comes on and you think, hmm, maybe we ought to spend a little bit more time right there in that spot. Take my drag. Oh, he got off, darn it. Oh. Just lost him. I uh, wasn't quite sure, honestly. I don't know if it did. So the same spot where you've been getting him down below. He just picked one up. And shortly after that, we added that UV lemon lime smile blade, and man, that was the ticket. We're catching so many fish down here that we got to get, everybody's got to get involved, including the cameraman. Coming up after the break. Size. WorkSharp presents the Northwest Outdoorsman brought to you by Max Lure, Sportsman's Warehouse, Whitewater Lodge, Procure Bait Sense, Valley Marine, Micklich, Wolf Creek Hunting. Welcome back as the walleye bite is picking up. And shortly after that, we added that UV lemon lime smile blade, and man, that was the ticket. We're catching so many fish down here that we got to get Everybody's got to get involved, including the cameraman. Good one? Oh yeah, nice one. Getting a little nicer fish today. Right there in that spot, we just about got to it and you picked up that fish. Nightcrawler? Sure. Okay. Is that oil or gel? Oh, gel. Oh, perfect. Hmm. And then I think with this dirtier water, definitely you're trying to maximize any any attraction you can. So, you know, using the smile blades, using um, the chartreuse colors, and then just use as much scent as possible. And we were using um, the Procure walleye scent and the nightcrawler scent. And, uh, and I think that really helped too. I mean, it really it was really sticky and uh, it seemed like it, it adhered to the worms well. We start from real bait. That's what we're always looking for. We get it in here, we freeze it if we need to, and then we get it out of the freezer. And if it's not crawler, we just put them right in with salt. Leave it a couple days, two to three days. Yeah, it draws all the moisture, all the water out of it. The next step is the dehydrator. We put the bait in a little trays. Yeah, we uh, get it, put them to the meat grinder. And if we need it right away, we add the, all the amino acid. And then we, the next step is uh, add the gel mineral oil, all the chemicals, and we mix it in a special machine that we have. So then we run it through the machine, uh, oil filler or gel filler with the copper and everything, and then we got the labeler. After um, he gets it bottled, and then they case pack it up, they keep it back here and all over. It just goes in as finished product, and then we just wait for orders. The product is always going out the door for orders, so they're always constantly making fresh stuff. So it will never sit in here for longer than a month. All over the world, yep, internationally, all over the U.S., and then Germany, New Zealand, Australia, Russia. And the shelf life on the actual product, the gel, is seven to ten years if you keep it out of the sunlight. So room temperature is recommended storage. That's what it looks like all finished, and it has the with UV, everything that we make uh, UV enhanced. Earlier, uh, we, we netted bigger fish than I saw other boats netting. Quarter ounce, little teardrop weight. Right. I don't know something, I don't know what else he had on there, but. And he was like four miles behind the oh, boat. Oh yeah, trying to jig. Sure. Anyhow, you, you can anchor up your boat in, in three feet of water, 
and I've caught seven, eight foot fish. Oh, jeez. Well, Brett had been up there the week before fishing with his brother, and uh, he, they caught a lot of fish, but their fish were much smaller. All right, got the magic on now. Get the lollipop on? Yeah. No way, really? Mm-hmm. Did you get bit? Good. Good one? Yeah, it's fighting too hard for a walleye. Big walleye. Ooh, big walleye. Big walleye. Big walleye. Yeah. Nice fish. Whew. That was the magic. I told you I should have switched here. Yeah. Fighting nice too fish. hard for a small walleye. That's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> Three pounder maybe? Yeah, nice one. Another male? Yeah. And we got the grade of fish was better today. We yeah, caught yeah. some bigger males today, so um, we got a we got a, a couple fish in the three to four pound range. Sit there and it's like did it, did it, did it, did it, it just tap and it's like oh, I bet that's a bass or something. Yeah. And it started to actually then actually fought, so it was like I think we should go back up. This water looks like it's gotten dirtier. Yeah, it does. Kind of switched, we were getting bit mainly lower earlier, and now everything's up here. So we'll get another one. Went short turns on those spots, and you know, those particular spots where were, the fish were biting. I think some of these drifts are just a, such a fast troll when the water's dirty. Sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, totally agree. There's a fish. Big fish. Oh, God, he just got off. God dang it. I wonder what that was. That looked like a good fish. See that I foul hooked it. I wonder if that was a sturgeon. No. If it was a sturgeon, it would have taken off quicker. Coming up after the break. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no kidding. Workshop presents the Northwest Outdoorsman brought to you by Max Lure, Sportsman's Warehouse, Whitewater Lodge, Procure Bait Sense, Valley Marine, Micklich, Wolf Creek Hunting. Welcome back. The guys have found what the walleye want, and big fish are coming over the rail. Yeah. We were catching 16, 18 you know, inch fish, and we caught some really nice fish. There's a fish. Big fish. Oh, God, he just got off. God dang it. I wonder what that was. That looked like a good fish. See that I foul hooked it. I wonder if that was a sturgeon. No. If it was a sturgeon, it would have taken off quicker. Yeah, the Wally Pop with that uh, that changed out, yeah. changed out uh, UV lemon lime blade in this really colored water Works. is really doing the ticket. Look at that thing. Yeah. Oh. Oh yeah. It's a bad yeah. year to do it on on our uh, our river. <laughs> Hopefully we get some yeah. springers. Uh, I think I got this. <laughs> hmm. I'm not kidding. <laughs> you know, you're in that that lulled state, it's yeah. getting warm. You know, haven't been bit for a little bit. All of a sudden, you get one of these. I mean, just, just geez, <laughs> and I'm about ready to set, uh, nothing, and he yards it again. I go, oh, gone. Oh yeah, he's he's a uh, he's a lot of fun, uh, entertaining, and uh, he's you can tell he's got a lot of passion for fishing, and and uh, just you know I do too, so it's always fun to be with like-minded people. Meeting Brett was was great. He's a good friend of uh, Rich and Ron's, and they have spent a lot of time together. And you could tell when he got in the boat, you know, pretty laid back, and and we hit it off really well. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. We, we enjoyed ourselves, caught a lot of fish. You got one. In the, in the spot? No. I've used some of their kokanee gear and I've had really good luck with it. It was cool to use some of good that one. gear for walleye today and, and especially that, you know, we're using that UV blade and that really, 
It was really cool how the sun reflected off of it. You know, I mean, it really shone. Some of the old tried and true products, the Wally Pop, with the flotation of the pill float, the flotation of the surgical tubing, as well as, you know, you can pull that, that uh, tapered bead out, put scent in it, it's like a scent chamber, with an inch and a half smile blade on top of it. It moves it back and forth like a crankbait. I think that's part of the reason that, that it worked much better. Nice fish. Nice job. Wow. Oh, excuse me. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome, huh? Yeah, no kidding. Good fish. Good job. Yeah. Thanks for netting him. Another male, too. Yeah, we're getting some nice ones. The Columbia River is an awesome place to be. It's a working river. We've got trains on both sides, you've got the freeway, you've got the barges, and then everybody enjoying the fishing that there is to do on the river. It's just a wonderful place to be, and the scenery is to die for. You can see Mount Hood, the basalt cliffs. I mean, you just can't beat it. No, oh, it's beautiful. I, it's a, it's definitely a, an annual event for me now. I'm camping in the park here is really nice, and you know, especially if you can make a few days out of it. And it's uh, it's beautiful area. The the Columbia itself is is very very unique. Good eating size. Sorry. Sailfish. I just had such a great time uh, fishing that day down in the Columbia River. It was really fun to get together with Brett and uh, have Bobby meet uh, a friend of ours that we've done stuff for a long time. And it was a beautiful day. We caught lots of walleye. Uh, it really just can't be beat. Now it's time for another Harrods Cookhouse recipe brought to you by Micklich, the Spokane Spice Company since 1948. Today we are making baked Parmesan walleye. This recipe is a great alternative to deep frying. Start by preheating oven to 450 degrees and grease a baking sheet. Beat two eggs in a flat bowl. Combine 1 3rd cup breadcrumbs, 1 3rd cup instant potato flakes, and 1 3rd cup Harrods Cookhouse Parmesan Fish Seasoning, the perfect all-in-one seasoned Parmesan. Dredge about 8 ounces of walleye in eggs and crust mixture. Bake for 15 to 20 minutes, remove and enjoy. Mm. For this and other great recipes, visit the Herod Outdoors website. Tune in next week for another great wild game recipe. Usually try to have a turkey camp slash spring bear camp when we draw tags. So we do that, you know, over, over out of uh, Enterprise every chance we get. And, uh, and then, you know, just fishing. Uh, we've fished quite a bit in the past. Uh, you guys used to come down and fish for salmon when Ron and I were both in the Portland area, Clackamas and Sandy. And so. Always okay. after something. Always after something. <laughs>